returning viewer, and if you are new, my hope is that the title of this video and thumbnail will gain some new viewers so they can learn about this marvelous, marvelous series, if in case you did not know about it already. So if you are here because you love the Anne Girl, if you love the Anne of Green Gables series, and you feel very bereft when you are done with it, you don't want to leave Prince Edward Island, you don't want to leave the beautiful writing, the humor, all of the feelings that well up in you, in you when you read this series, I have a series for you to try. And that is the Betsy Tacy series by Maud Hart Lovelace. If you have not heard about this series, you are in for quite a treat. So I have a list of things that are strengths of the Anne of Green Gable series and are coincidentally strengths of the Betsy Tacy series. The first is that there are great female characters. Betsy Tacy, this series, in case you don't know about it, is set in a small town in Minnesota at the very beginning of the 20th century. And you're following primarily Betsy, Tacy, and Tib. They are three girls who they are five when the story starts out. And then you get to see them all the way until they are adults and in established homes and married. So it's really wonderful to see them all turn into strong women and they show their strength in different ways. What I love is that they each have three very distinct personalities and you get to see them become them come into their own. And they are inspired by Maud, who is the author. Um, so Ellen Montgomery and Maud Hart Lovelace both share the name Maud, which is really fun. And um, they have very different personalities, Betsy, Tacy, and Tib. And that is because the author Maud based Betsy off herself and then the friends Tacy and Tib off her friends in real life. And you can really see this because the characters in this series really come to life and there's a lot of distinct characters and it's just really, really special. Another thing um, that you will see in common is that in the very first book, Anne of Green Gables, the language I think is uh, very much at what a child could read. Uh, but the uh, books going on in the series are what an older child would want to read. So with these first four books, the first book, I mean, I think a third grader could read the first book. And then as you move on in the series, they're still for children. And then it moves up in the reader's ability in Heaven to Betsy and Betsy in Spite of Herself, followed by Betsy Was a Junior, Betsy and Joe, Betsy in the Great World, and Betsy's Wedding. And then a related story as, uh, you know, it's in, set in Deep Valley, which is the town that all of our characters live in, is Emily of Deep Valley, which is a really special novel all on its own. And then there are two related short stories. One when the girls, Betsy, Tacy, and Tip are very little called Winona's Pony Cart. And it is their friend Winona when she has a birthday party. And then later on when they're older is Carney's House Party. So I like that you get to grow um, with the characters as you are reading it. So it's really special uh, for kids specifically to grow up reading this series. But I do know of multiple adults that did not read this series growing up and came to it as adults and still loved it a lot, which is really encouraging for trying to get more people to know about Betsy Tacy. The next thing that I know so many readers love about Anne of Green Gables are all of the friendships in it. And I think you have friendship emphasized maybe even more in the Betsy Tacy series. There's just something where Maud Hart Lovelace has such an ability to um, show, you know, they say show, don't tell. And she really makes you feel like these characters are so real and their bond with one another and how they learn to be good friends and how to support each other in their endeavors and just to challenge each other as they grow to be the best versions of themselves that they can be is really special to see. And um, then later on when they're in high school, uh, it's really fun to see them hang out with guys in the high school. You don't see that as much when they're little, but it's uh, just such a really spectacularly fun element of this series as them hanging out with guys and um, just having lots of fun, whether it's singing songs around the piano or going ice skating in the winter time or eating some ice cream sundaes at Heinz's or watching football games. They really know how to have fun together. And that goes along with my next point is that there is this fun is a serious business. You know, this exuberant enjoyment in life that you see in Anne Shirley. You see how she can take as much joy in uh, you know, a really wonderful book as she does in a new 
uh, flower that has bloomed in the garden. Just this savoring of every last little enjoyment in life is very much felt by Anne Shirley and Betsy Ray, our lead character. They are fairly similar characters, Anne Shirley and Betsy Ray. Betsy, I would say, is definitely more of an extrovert, but the way that Betsy internalizes her feelings makes it feel really similar to Anne. And again, how's there, there's this real just savoring of every last little enjoyment that you have in life. The next thing that I think readers really love about Anne of Green Gables is Anne's imagination. She is able to come up with the most vivid, creative, and really just special imaginative games. Um, and that you think, how did you come up with this? How are you this creative? And you also see this in the Betsy Tacey series. When she's young, Betsy comes up with imaginative games to play with Tacey and Tib, and even a few times uses this as a really healthy coping mechanism when some hard things have happened to them, and it's a good way for them to process it. As she's older, Betsy starts to write stories, and you can see her imagination really come onto the page and come to life there. And I really love that about Betsy Ray as a character. And the next thing is that it is a coming of age narrative. Like I said, it starts out when they are little and then later on you see them in high school and then later on you see them as grown ups. And um, what I really love is in, I lost my book there, in Betsy and the Great World, you get to see her as an independent adult traveling along on her own and seeing all of these sites in Europe. It's neat to see the world through such fresh eyes uh, and Betsy really kind of just taking everything in and having such an adventurous spirit about her. Even though she is homesick through a lot of it, I think that uh, Betsy Ray and Anne Shirley are similar in that, that they are homebodies and they love to have a really cozy domestic environment around them. They both long for that. Then also just for the feelings, all of the um, just ways that you feel so attached to the Anne of Green Gables series, the huge cast of characters. There's a huge cast of characters in uh, the Deep Valley Betsy Tacey series and I love that about it. And I just feel so nostalgic and so much deep and abiding love for the characters and the plot lines in this story. I haven't even touched on, you know, Betsy's family, Mr. and Mrs. Ray, Bob and Jules Ray, and then her sister, Julia, and her younger, her older sister, Julia, and her younger sister, Margaret. They add such a really wonderful depth to the story. And then they have a maid named Anna, and she has such a personality, and um, she's always cooking delicious things in the kitchen. And so I love that home is such an inviting and cozy environment in the Anne of Green Gable series, but it also is in the Betsy Tacey series. And um, there are a couple different homes that Betsy is in throughout this time, but they are cozy in all of them, and I love that about it. The next one is that Betsy and Anne both have very romantic tendencies with their personalities. They love to sit and kind of think about romantic scenarios and also sometimes get a bit too carried away with this. And they both learn some lessons from that. And I love that Anne um, and Betsy are both flawed characters and they learn from their mistakes. They are not these, uh, you know, lofty, angelic characters. No, they make mistakes and they feel relatable because of that. And then after their mistakes, they kind of evaluate, how could I have dealt with that differently? And they try to do better after that. And it's very inspiring to see that, to own up to the mistakes that you've made and try to fix it, try to make it better. And then also they're just going along with the you know, exuberant enjoyment in life is that there is magic in every day to kind of um, the writing that Maud Hart Lovelace and Ellen Montgomery have is just seeing the magic in the everyday. You know, a walk to school could just be this kind of normal thing, a walk to school. But when it's written with such skill, like Ellen Montgomery had or Maud Hart Lovelace had, you are right there in the moment. You're seeing everything there along with the characters. And it's magical and marvelous when something is written by a skilled writer, how exciting it can make themes seem. And um, the idyllic setting, I would say, is the next thing that you have in common with the Anne of Green Gables series. Now, the interesting thing about this is that um, the setting in Anne of Green Gables, it's much, it's much more rural 
but I'd say kind of this magic in the ordinary um, ordinary days, this just skill for writing and making things seem so special um, is also there with Maud Hart Lovelace. In Deep Valley, it is a small-ish town. And um, so I think the urban setting can sometimes be hard to write as idyllic, but Maud Hart Lovelace does it. And she wants you to, uh, she makes you want to live in Deep Valley, to go get ice cream sundaes at Heinz's, to visit the library, or to go eat at the Moorish Cafe, uh, to go see something at the theater. And Betsy's father owns a shoe shop. And um, just to go see all of these different sites. And then, but they live um, for part of the series right at the edge of town where there is a big hill. And I think that um, it just really speaks to her skill. Like I want to live in that little town so much, even though it would be very cold a lot of the year in Minnesota. And lastly is the humor. There are so many enjoyable parts in this, particular characters like um, Cab and Tony and Mr. Ray in particular. There is a lot of humor in there. The humor that you love in the Anne of, Anne of Green Gables series, you're also going to have in this series. So I hope that maybe I have convinced some Anne of Green Gables fans to pick this series up because I can't recommend it enough. I, it's just such, um, uh, imp an important part of my reading memories and now rereading it as an adult. Um, I, I just want to keep coming back to the story, spending time with these characters. And uh, it's just a marvelous, marvelous series to love and know as a reader. Thank you for watching as always, and I will be back for another video soon and have a lovely day. Bye.